Hi, my name is Sandy Barrett, and I'm here with What's Happening, our monthly show, sometimes twice a month, to talk about current events. I'm here today with Pete Garitano, a lay expert on the virus and on all the shutdowns. Pete has been uh, researching the, uh, the uh, facts, the science behind the COVID-19 virus, and he has a lot to say about it. He has found some of the same facts as other scientists have found. He saw, found some additional facts, and he has come up with his interpretation of what's happening with COVID and also with our whole societal shutdowns as well. So I think that that's what we'll do today is we'll talk about the current events. And I might mention in line with that that our governor, Governor Scott, who's up for re-election, has announced today that he will extend the emergency powers that he has uh, under uh, the proclamation that he has made. He's extended those emergency powers until now October 15th. So let's start there. So what's up, Pete? What do you think about that? Well, I, I mean, I would like to be able to ask the governor what what uh, metric is going to make this end. In other words, there's got to be like a line in the stand. There's got to be a point where you say, okay, well, we've tested a thousand people and one person has come up positive because if that's the metric you're using, then let's, let's get a number. So it's just not a random thing or it just keeps going on and on because it appears that it's like, I hate to use the Trump comparison, but it seems like there's an electoral thing going on here that for some reason we're extending this way beyond what we need to because somebody's afraid of looking weak but but Vermont has been clean for so long it just seems idiotic to me that we're not a hundred percent open right now there's no evidence whatsoever that the virus is spreading here or that there's any problems there hasn't been a death in almost three months nobody's going to the hospital even the students the big the big hair on fire thing with the students coming to town oh my god it's gonna be horrible well they started coming in early June and we didn't have a big outbreak we didn't have a bunch of hospitalizations we had nobody die young people aren't getting it okay young people aren't getting sick they're not dying they're less than a tenth of a percent it's time to start our, our businesses again the restaurants town town and get back to normal so at what point dr phil scott is what i want to know are we going to absolutely open the, the state up but what, what are you using if you're looking looking at data what what is what is the answer because europe's opened up long ago and they had way more cases and way more things going on and there doesn't seem to be a real big problem there and we are cleaner than any country in Europe right now so what is it going to take? Well we're cleaner in Vermont too yeah, in than Vermont. any place else. That's what I mean, in, Vermont. Yeah. Right. In fact Dr. Levine said today that Vermont just was commended by the CDC about how we have done contact tracing. We did? Yeah. I didn't I, know that. Yeah, yeah. That we have done contact tracing of people who are positive. I know that because remember there was an outbreak maybe in Winooski and people were contacted, they were traced, they cooperated, and it's still, you know, that was pretty much put under control and there really have not been any serious outbreaks, I don't think, since then up there in, in Vermont. Well, and contact tracing is another thing that, it, it, you know, people say the contact tracing, it works, but it's been a total failure in Israel. Israel has been one of the most draconian lockdown societies and their and their corona cases are up again and, and you know they're having problems again and so and so the whole lockdown thing has not proven to work either. The, some of the states in the United States that had no lockdowns that stayed open have, don't have any worse and in most cases have better numbers than the lockdown states. So the lockdown thing, you know, really didn't do anything. It was it was a way for I think the politicians and people to feel like they were doing something because nobody really knows. You know, they don't know what. I don't think anybody really knows what it is and how to control it. So that's the only thing they can do is put your mask on and let's lock down. But there's no proof lockdowns work. And if you look at a lot of the graphs of when the deaths came, they were two or three weeks after the lockdown started. And so it, it it's just it's kind of a band-aid approach to something that nobody knows what's going on. Well, what have you found out about this virus anyway, in all your hours of research, right? Yeah, reading medical journals and everything. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, today, today what I've been doing is reading uh, uh, the last couple of days is about masks, because there's a big debate about whether masks work, everybody's walking around with masks on, they're forced to wear masks. Can I interrupt you ask yeah. you a question? Many people feel that there isn't even a debate about masks. Well, it's no. asserted. It's asserted that right. masks are masks are effective. I've always said that is not no. necessarily the case. Well, my initial 
argument with masks is for the last 50 to 100 years, when you're in a hospital and a doctor or a nurse came up to your bed, they weren't wearing a mask. And so there were all kinds of diseases, unknown and known, infectious, not infectious, in hospitals and doctors and nurses weren't walking around wearing masks. So are we saying that this thing that's out there right now is the worst thing ever in the history of mankind, that all of a sudden so. everybody has to be wearing? Apparently that's what we're saying. This is worse than the bubonic plague, Ebola, and everything else, because apparently you have to be wearing a mask outside in the fresh air, which is kooky to me. Because, I mean, they've already done the, the, the statistics on this current thing, and people catching it outside in fresh air, it's like, there's there nobody, it's, it's nobody. I mean, it's, it's and, and the proof of whether they had something ahead of time so the mask debate is only a debate because the power to be, debate. well, it's they the want us to wear masks, yeah. so they're saying it's been proven. But I mean, I, I was online today. I'm going to just pull a piece of paper out looking at um, this. The, uh, sorry about that. The Center for Infectious Diseases, okay, had an article out in May saying there's really no proof that masks do anything. Well, they got attacked because this is a big medical publication in the United States. So they revised their thing in July, and they said, well, there's really no proof that masks do anything. And they, they said listed, it again? They said it again, but they kind of like footnoted and said, well, we need to do more studies. So they're, they're kind of like backpedaling, saying we need to do more studies. But underneath this article, they listed 50 studies done since 1920 through last year. That pretty much every one proved masks didn't do anything. And then most of them are in hospital settings, where they would have, there was one done in Sweden where they had 3,000 operations done by doctors with masks, 3,000 done without masks, okay? That's a lot of operations. The infection rate of the patients was exactly the same because patients routinely get infected during surgery. Right, I right. mean, it's, it's like 5% right. of the time. It's something, it just happens. They don't know nothing. It's kind of an unknown thing. Well, and when you open up a body. You open up a body, they get infected. Dangerous. So wearing a mask had yeah. absolutely no effect right. on these infections. And this is a, it's like theoretically a super clean environment inside a hospital, you think. You know, everybody's washing their hands, they're disinfecting and everything. So, I mean, there's this one study, but there was 40 others. There were studies in houses. There were studies, many, many studies in hospitals, actually. And there's just minimal effect, if any, and there's a couple of studies that said it was worse. And of course, the, the, the theory behind that is that unless you change your mask every day or wash it every day, things are getting in there, whether it's corona or anything, and you're touching it. Nobody's going like this and holding out like this and getting rid of it because every time you touch it, then you touch your eyes, you touch your mouth, you do something. It's really hard to be really you know, perfect with that. And they're saying there's, there's more of a chance with a mask that if you do get something, you, you won't do the right thing. But so there's there's plenty of scientific studies out there that have shown that masks really don't have any effect. And I mean, I mean, some of the reasoning is you're talking about stopping particles. I read that in a breath of air, there's a trillion molecules, one breath of air. Okay, and then and and if somebody's next to you with some kind of infectious disease. Not only Corona. Not only Corona. Right. Anything, pneumonia. That, that they could be breathing out a hundred thousand viral particles every minute. So you have a hundred thousand particles that are smaller than a dust or a smoke particle that are flying around. Well, I did an experiment at home, and I I took a puff of something, a cigarette, put a mask on, and then just exhaled. Well, most of the smoke doesn't come out of this part of the mask. It comes out of here. I mean, you can't, no matter what you do, your mask isn't going to perfect. So if there's 50 to 100,000 microscopic particles floating around, some of them are going to get in. Mm -hmm. and, and the virologists are saying it only takes one to get you sick. So if you stop 50,000 with the mask, but another 50,000 get through, I mean, it, it's not going to matter. You know? so, so why then is there this not only assertion, it seems to be that everyone believes totally or is taught to believe that masks are 100% effective and masks are being mandated everywhere. In fact, I think that in our electoral contests that some of the yeah, politicians, yeah. including on a national level, are saying that they will get a national mask mandate, even though it seems that at least we're on the downside of the pandemic. Right. I, I mean, once again, I think it's because they have been kind of powerless to stop whatever's going on, really. I mean, because you look at places where they've done certain things and it's worked and other places where it hasn't worked. 
I mean, so the two things they can do is a lockdown and a mask. There's no vaccine, which is going to be the big, supposedly the end of it all. But so what else do they can say? We, they, they had to try something. So those were the two things they but tried. But why did they try a complete shutdown? Okay, I want to go back a little bit. In the history of pandemics, and there have been many pandemics, right? Starting the one that I'm most familiar with historically is the bubonic plague. And then there's always How been- How old are you? I, not, not, I was not born in the 14th century, but I am old. Um, but in every other virus, in, in fact, a person my age has right. lived through enormous amount of viruses. Uh, that's probably why I'm not so afraid of it, actually. But I am afraid of what happened with this one after the virus became known as a pandemic. So why did our government, why did the governments of the world say, well, this is so bad, we have to shut down all of society, all of it, and lock people up at home, even. So yeah. give me an idea about I, I that. I don't why? know. I mean, all the, the conspiracy people would say it's- uh, But let's not That's why I want to go there, but they would say, oh, it's because they're trying to control society or something, but it could be the testing. It's the way the way we tested this time, they made it look worse than it really was. And once again, I don't want to, say something that unpopular people have said, but the fact of the matter is the tests that we're using now did not exist in mass 10 years ago. So when the previous pandemic, which was like the H1N1, 2009 came out. Is that SARS? That was the first SARS. Okay. The, and even the swine flu back then, they didn't have this PCR test. They had it, but it just kind of come out. So there was literally like 150 labs in the whole United States. So what the CDC, this is one other, so there's two things that made this different. In 2009, when the last pandemic came out, the CDC, this was the advice they gave people. There's something like the flu out there. Unless you're really sick, just stay home, and when your symptoms go away, then go back to work. Mm -hmm. That was their advice. Now, imagine the difference now. Now, this is yes, something that's right. almost identical in the virus world as this, this one. It's the only difference is they gave it a two at the end, and it's like slightly different. So that was the advice back then. They said, if you're really, really sick and you think you need to go to a hospital, go to a hospital and then we'll test you. Those were the only people being tested. So people would go No, wait a minute, but that's what everybody has always said. If you're sick, stay home. Right, well, that's the advice this right? should be given this time. Right. But anyway, so hardly anybody went in. Less people died, according to the statistics, but, um, but the people that were given tests, since there's only 140, well, there's probably, in the United States, 100,000 tests now. So everybody can get a test. So they decided, well, we have to check all these people. But if you look back at the 2009 pandemic, they now estimate how many people really had it. And so even though back then they said 12,000 people died, but 200,000 had it, they say now the estimates are 30 million had it, and maybe two or three- 30 million had what? The 2009 one. Uh -huh and maybe 300,000 died, we just don't know. Now the reason they're having to have this giant spread of like 12 to 300,000 and 30 million, because if they'd been doing the test back then, they probably would have had the same number of people test positive because they would have had the little snippet of viral RNA in them that said they had this thing, even though they weren't symptomatic and they weren't really infectious. And, and I mean, something we brought up in the last show, the average person has between 50 and 100 viruses in their body at all times. You've got mono, you've got herpes, you've got all these things you've never even heard of. And a lot of people have these, they're just in there. They don't do anything to them. And some of them are in there for a while, some of them are in there and then they just get shed out of your body in this thing called an exosome. They just relieve, re release your body. And sometimes when a bunch of them are, le are leaving your body, you start to get like a cold, but then it goes away because they're kind of, they're all gone. It's like, it's like dead skin, it comes out. So, but some of these, you know, if you, so next year if we said that the UVM students, okay, we don't have COVID, but we want to bring you on and we're going to test you all for herpes. Well, we already know that they say 50 to 100 percent of everybody has that virus in them, but it's just dormant. It doesn't do anything. But what if they brought them all and said, OK, well, you've got herpes. Sorry, you can't kiss or have sex because you might give it to somebody. I mean, you could do this with 50 different viruses. Some of them are thought to cause cancer. Some of them are oh, thought yeah. to cause cause you really see? weird, strange diseases you've never heard of. All these different viruses have identified. And you could find the, the little snippet of viral RNA in you, but it doesn't mean it's going to do anything. Or, or people, does it mean that it's contagious? It doesn't mean it's contagious. It doesn't mean it's infectious. And a lot of people, the people that are arguing the science that's out there now, point to this and say, well, what if this is kind of just the same thing? It's just one of those things that's in some people. Only certain people are affected. Other people aren't affected. And so, I mean, that's the argument being used. 
but the reason, the, the original question was why the panic, and I say because of this testing. Because if, if, we, ha if we didn't have, if we did things exactly the same as 09, maybe some of these deaths would have been pneumonia, maybe, who knows, they, you know, they would have been reported differently. And that's the other thing that's being done differently. Right, well, about. wait a minute, Let, let's, yeah. let's, let's really talk about that for a minute. So when people die with COVID, I guess, this time if they're the in the hospital, right. this time, yeah. if they're in the hospital or even not, and if they die of COVID or COVID-like, or COVID, say, right, they're right. tested, don't they usually die also of a comorbidity? Well, What's I mean, that was deal? a big thing that came out in the New York Times and a bunch of people got upset with about a week ago, is there, of the 150,000 deaths, deaths and I've, you can look at all the CDC data, only like 9,000 had only COVID. Only as, COVID. Only COVID. The average had two and a half things. So you'd have COVID, you'd have pneumonia, you'd have diabetes, you'd have uh, heart disease. You, there's there's 22 comorbidities that have been listed. So a lot of the argument is, well, how do you know they didn't die of a heart attack? How do you know that this positive test didn't mean this was infectious, but it was in their system, but they really just had a heart attack? And yeah, so how they, do you know? Well, they don't unless they do a culture, and then it's even still hard to prove, and they're not, because of the PCR test, they're not actually culturing a, a, a hunk of the the bacteria out of somebody's chest and letting it grow to see if it was infectious because that's the only way to prove something infectious. But it also, it still doesn't really mean it causes their symptoms. So all the, most of these are respiratory things and there's so many respiratory illnesses and, and many that people die of and the, the number one in the world is pneumonia that kills two to three million people every year. Because that's the end result That's the end of, of a lot of people. My, yeah, right, my dad died end. of pneumonia, right. but he had multiple my sclerosis. Too. Right. I mean, but he really died of, I mean, so multiple sclerosis was a comorbidity, but pneumonia was what's called the immediate cause. Right, right. So, but what happened in March, the CDC said, well, you know, if, if it's, if it's, you think it's COVID, it tests as COVID, just list it as COVID. Yeah. And so that was another thing. Wait a minute, people, the CDC said The CDC said, that? said, look, if it's assumed or presumed that the actual cause of death was COVID, even though it might have been something else, just put COVID as the main one. So that's the other thing people have kind of complained about, which also didn't happen previous in any other thing, the pandemic. The CDC didn't come out and say, look, as long as they test, so let's say, as long as they test for herpes, if they die of heart attack, we're going to put herpes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they I mean, didn't that's, do it that's, I mean, it's a little different, but it's the same thing because you could test for, you could test for all 200 viruses if you wanted to. You just have to get this thing that's like a picture of the sequence and then you match it up and that's what they do. They take a little hunk, they match the sequence and they go, yeah, we have, we have COVID. We have this thing we've identified in China as being this virus. So this is another thing, which the, so the two things are the new test and the cause of death, the way it's listed. And, um, you know, it's, it's a different way and it's, it's created this thing. Yeah, people say, well, but there's people dying and there's excess deaths. Well, yeah, there, it, there seemed to be. I mean, there seemed to be and, there may, you know, maybe it was. But a, are there more than the ordinary flu? Is it that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's one thing that seems to be true because you can also look at that data, like excess death. And it, it spiked in April in the United States and then it's gone up a little bit the last couple of months. But there have also been a lot more heart attacks, a lot more deaths from diabetes, a lot more deaths from other things. And obesity. And obesity has been, you know, they talk about the comorbidity factors, but um, so a lot of it is, a lot of it is guessing, I'm afraid. I mean, because it's, it's. But the, um, but the thing that has upset me since the beginning is even if we accepted everything that they said, which I don't, I mean, I happen to agree with you, but even if we did, why the shutdowns? Why did our economy collapse? Why was it a deliberate yeah. creation of a depression, it's, of an economic? What countries do that ever collapse your economy deliberately? Well, I don't think they did it deliberately. Yeah, I, I do. I, I, I mean, they shut down everything. They must have known well, it was going mean, to happen. I think for years, every time one of these things happened, let's go back, there was the bird flu and the Asian flu and the, and the swine flu. And, and polio. The, well, Before I mean, that. I'm talking about all these. You know, Modern. We all remember like, oh my God, the bird flu. Oh my God, Ebola, right? And it right. would come along and everybody would go out and then kind of never materialized as being as bad. It was, I remember being worried about the bird flu and worried about the swine flu and it never kind of got momentum as, you know, bad momentum, whatever. But, um, because they burned themselves out too. Right? Well, they burned themselves yeah. out, and I really believe because of the way we tested and everything, this one, I don't hate to use the word, got sold or marketed better, but it kind of caught on more because it, ma it made it look way worse than it might have really been. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I guess time will tell if it really goes away, but most of, almost every one of these things goes away in six to nine months, and we're, 
and in the other countries like China, of course, it's gone, and in, in Europe, it's pretty much gone, and, and we'll be like end of October if it's the same kind of that's cycle. That's your prediction. Well, that's kind of the same cycle. The last one started in late May, and it ended in like late November, the one in 2009. And, and so, and in the, in the Northeast, it's kind of done the same thing. We started a couple months before, like Florida and California, as mm -hmm. far as the peak. And, you know, it's all, it's all, it's a lot of guesswork and just looking at stuff. But I know, but what, we're, what worried me from the beginning is that society has been really, I guess I shouldn't say wrecked, and it's coming back a oh, bit, yeah. but it has been it has been wrecked. Politically, there has been huge damage to democracy, and um, socially, culturally, no sports, no entertainment, no, in other words, oh, no the, fun. And that was said last night, by no, the way, no, on no Fox. No fun. It, it, the right. economy and... And the economy, my God. It, Even Burlington, you know? Yeah. No, I, it's 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 Why? really a horrible thing, and, and a lot yeah. of people have pointed to that that's worse than what would have killed people, and that there's going to be starvation all over the world and all this stuff. And is there? I mean, I mean, there's a lot of certainly there's people hurting right now. I mean, we're most of us aren't. I mean, we're okay. That's not but correct. You know, if I, I was 21 and I'd been working in the restaurant the last four my years. Kid, my and, grandson has. And uh, well, my son's not been working either because he needs to travel. So. Yeah, it's because uh, you I can't mean, travel either. Uh, New York City is won't be the same for a long, long time. It's, it's Broadway's closed. Yeah, young people don't care about some of this stuff. Though. I think yes, they do. I think young people are, are you accepting kidding? this more than you and I. This whole mask thing and the lockdown—they're okay with it. What do you think? What do I think? I don't know. We have a couple of guests here. I, maybe we could ask their opinion, but they don't know any different. They they didn't live young 40 people years don't. Without. Well, but right. but okay. So it's I like live in a house with a pile of teenagers, black teenagers yeah. that live downstairs from me. Men, boys, between eighteen and twenty-two, they're unemployed. Yeah. I mean, they're not now. They've gone back to work. One of them works at a restaurant downtown, and so it's open maybe three days a week. So he's happier. Um, some of them have been unemployed since March. What on earth are they going to do with their lives? What, and also, but this is what really gets me, and I feel like asking Governor Scott and Zuckerman both, who are running for office, what on earth future is there in this state if this continues? What on, what on earth future is there for the Vermont State Colleges? Well, I mean, or, or you, yeah, okay, this is yeah. what really concerned me politically more than anything. I live in Ward 1, where there's huge amounts of students. There was a petition circulating among, I would say, the older people, I'm old, but other older people, to tell students that they couldn't come back to Burlington and live in our city because of COVID. And I, I put on front page forum something, I said, are you kidding me? What is this town gonna be like without students? What are the restaurants gonna be like, the bars? What is the culture gonna be? Are you crazy? Are you kidding? It's, you know, you and, know? It's all and the president, by the way, of UVM has insisted, and that rightfully so, that UVM has got to continue, doesn't it? Well, I, I mean, yeah, it has to continue, but I, I it's, you know, I mean, and a lot of this stuff, I mean, you read about germ theory and viral theory. A lot of this stuff is really, it's just like theoretical. And there's articles, well, there's one here I read today, dismantling the viral viral theory that, like, people actually believe, and there's a lot, but just as much, a lot of the evidence is just correlation. Like, you say, okay, this person had this, and so then they had the symptoms, so they must be, they must be together. Must be because the they Because yeah. they're coughing and sneezing, and we found this little thing right. in there. But other people are saying, like I did research, that well, it was really polluted in Wuhan. It was right. really polluted in right. New York City, and that those pollutants are shown to really cause a serious respiratory problem. So maybe it was the pollutants, and that's more of a coincidence than this. So there's all these other things. And right. Some people were saying, what well, was the new 5G technology? I mean, there's, but I mean, some of that's, that's shown to do physiological harm to your body. I mean, certainly pollution. They say claims millions and millions of people. I want to say 8 million people worldwide, they say, died directly from pollution, which is never, by the way, listed on a death certificate. Of in fact, somebody in Ireland sued the... They're smoking. Because, is it? Right. Sued the uh, country because they wouldn't list her daughter as death from pollution when the pollution had gotten really bad. And that is never, ever listed, even though WHO and the and the American the Lung Association all admit, or they'll admit, stay, have the statistics, pollution kills 8 million people a year and like 800,000 in the United States. They'll, it'll never be listed on there. So there's other environmental factors and things that cause these things to happen, including DNA and RNA changes in your body because they saw, cause this thing called oxidative stress that do things to your I'm body. So there's 
there's all kinds of different ideas besides the one that's out there about what, you know, and we would rather, I read this interesting analogy today about a fishbowl, this guy, there's many doctors, including naturopathic ones, but regular doctors saying, yeah, I mean, I think one of the last things Pasteur said was, um, forget about the germ, it's the terrain, there's like some famous statement. And he was saying, look, you know, let's make sure everybody's healthy and they're yeah. eating properly and they're breathing fresh air and drinking clean water, then let's see what's going on. And so a lot right. of these things can be blamed on other stuff. And um, there was this analogy of a fishbowl, if you had a fish in a fishbowl of water and it was all dirty and the fish wasn't doing well, would you like, like, give him some medicine or would you change the water and put the fish back in or something and that was kind of an analogy about what's going on like because we I mean one of the first things they said was people with pre-existing conditions right yeah and then people that were a certain age, age. Yeah. And, and and the thing about older people and we're all in that group is that your immune systems aren't as strong as they used to be so even if you don't really have pre-existing conditions it's a little tougher bite even a cold and, and people go into the hospital they're perfectly fine and they get pneumonia or in the nursing home too. Or, and, right, they, 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 in the nursing home. And so, you know, there's a lot of other factors besides, you know, that the mystery virus did it. So it's... Um, we, don't, we don't have a heck of a lot of time left, but let me, let me go back to what I said before. I have been horrified since the beginning at the system that was established as a result of, I suppose, the panic about the virus. If you think about it, the system, to me, has been absolutely inhuman. People aren't supposed to see each other, gather, touch each other. I suppose that would interfere with people's sex lives, which is a perfectly, usually normal human activity. They're not, they're supposed to sit in nursing homes and die on their own without visits. They can't be visited in the hospital. Can you imagine a kid in the yeah. hospital dying of something and can't see his mother? I mean, well, I, well, okay, but going back to that, I don't get it. I've not gotten it from the beginning. Couldn't they have quarantined the sick and let the healthy proceed with their lives? Well, yeah, to me, right when the thing started, okay, it went through China, so we had all these statistics from China that 99% right. or 96% were people in this category. So let everybody else go back to work and say, look, if you're this, this, or this, be go very on. careful. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask, stay away, be careful. because. 65 and healthy people aren't dying from this. Okay, they just aren't. I mean, they say, oh, well, one kid, yeah, but they'll, you know, they'll, they'll have a case of somebody, and then you read that the person was 300 pounds and he had uh, uh, coke, you know, a comorbidity. A co you know, it's yeah. like, okay, yeah, but so it, it may not have been that, you know. But my fear is the same thing as you, Sandy, is that what happens if they decide to connect this to just the regular flu next I know, year? I so know. So all of a sudden, we're already going in the flu season. So what happens, okay, so the COVID has gone down and all of a sudden the flu What's comes it, What out. if there's a new virus? We could mask for the flu the same way. They could test for the flu the same way next year and we could be in the same next situation. Next year, next month. It's right around the corner, right? right? So how long will this go on and then what is, you know, what is Where, the What result? is the end What is date? the end result of this, right? And, that, and, place, and, and, and the fact of the matter is places that didn't lock down are doing just fine. Places who never had a mask rule. Well, South Dakota, Iowa. South Dakota governor was fierce at the other right. NSR. I mean, they, they had deaths, but no more. Some of them less than anywhere South else. South Dakota they didn't had hardly any. They had hardly any. Yeah. Iowa didn't do too know. bad. Um, and they never had any of these rules and regulations. There are very few in some countries that didn't. I, mean, I guess uh, I, that's what worries me most. It's my be I'm going to quote Frederick Douglass. Go ahead. Who said once, power never concedes without a demand. Yeah. Correct? I mean, this has given politicians, health experts, enormous power over every aspect of our lives. Well, it, and it's not going to go away no. unless we ask it nicely, I guess, to go away. Well, we're, we're not that old, but we remember what happened after 9-11. And yeah. I kept saying, well, they made this emergency. Today is 9-11. I know, that's why I'm mentioning yeah. it. That, that they had all this emergency stuff. Well, they've never stopped the state of emergency right. since then, which is ludicrous. Because what you said is once they have a certain amount of power, no, no new president wants to give it up. So by, if Biden, if he gets elected, is not going to go, hey, you know what, 9-11 was 20 years ago. That's no more. We don't need to stay. Of course not, because it gives him all these special powers. Right, exactly. And every little thing that happens gives them kind of the right now to say, okay, well, we managed to be able to tell everybody they had to wear a mask and stay in their house, which also was one of the stupidest things ever.
to, to, for people to go into their house if they were sick because it was shown that the worst place you could be was inside. People weren't getting sick outside, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's what worries me is that every, like you said, every little thing that gives the people and, and the authorities more power, they're not going to ever they're give, it up. give it they're up. They're not going to give no, it up. No, they're not. But but it's it's a slow thing, and people are, are accepting of it. I think we're we're just we're just old cranky people, and we're just we just don't like it, and we're not accepting hey, it. Look, but and I, I'm a freedom loving person the way the Vermonters always were. Yeah, but my and son, I, and my I, son is like, eh, it's not a big deal. Yeah, but, but my <laughs> grandson does think it's a big deal well, because some he's been doing, unemployed. Some don't. Yeah, and he's not a he's not a computer junkie either. Yeah, you know, he's not interested in being on computers that much. You know. He's interested in being outside. He's interested in, you know, in sports. Well, which we, we, I can't believe the fact that sports have been. Well, I watched like ten minutes of NFL football last night with the coaches wearing shields and really? yeah, and um, I don't like mask. football, but I watched it. <laughs> I had to watch the scene. They had a, they had like they had fans. They were all spread out, which was okay. But, but at least they had some had, fans. Yeah, they had some. Fans, yeah, look at a but. baseball game. But we should we should do on. I'm gonna. Mark's probably not gonna watch. But Mark's thing is the Kui Bono, right? Yes. He would say that. Which and it's but it's so obvious who's been who's benefiting. I mean, we already know who's benefiting. All the tech companies, the yeah, pharmaceutical the companies. Right, exactly. Now, did they do it? I mean, I think we talked about that. I mean, I, mean, I don't think that anybody purposely did this. I think that they seized the opportunity. They saw it early on. and okay. said, Oh my gosh. We we, we have to show, We I'm have to close. Make. But we do have to ask yeah. the question. Maybe the next time. Who benefited from all this? As you said, the big, enormous capitalists. Oh, big money. Big capitalists, big money benefited, and big tyrants. Yeah, well, big tyrants, both. the one leaving and maybe hopefully not the one coming. And, I mean, the Democratic Party certainly is benefiting from this. It's, it's, yeah. their, it's yeah. their whole platform, pretty much, besides the obvious stuff. But okay, but we probably can't go there on one program, so we'll no. be back. Okay, we'll, we'll be back. Girls.